Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel and today we'll have a look into organizing our code with the Composition API as some kind of 2K special, hence it's not released on a Friday. I know lots of people looking forward to that, so let's waste no time and jump right into it. The Composition API has been out for many years now and here and there there are some patterns that have been emerged, it has support for lots of libraries and so on and so on. But especially people that grew up with the Options API, they see, well, we have lots of choices now, and this also gives some kind of choice fatigue, right? I mean, before when using the Options API, everything was nicely grouped by options, so like by type, right? And this means everything had some kind of place. Oh, computer property goes into computed, right? Some state, data, here we go. Props, own option. Lifecycle methods, yeah, mounted. Was an on thing, right? Before mouse, no problem. And this changed with the composition API. But I think for the better. And I'm also more than sure most of you know that graphic here already, which clearly shows how, if you would group and categorize everything by logic, the options API and the composition API would look next to each other. And here we clearly see with the options API, yeah, you group by option, but you don't have that logical grouping. While with the composition API, you can do this very nicely. And as I just mentioned, most of you probably know that uh, single graphic there already, but I wanna show how that looks like in practice, what patterns I would recommend, and what patterns you should avoid when using the Composition API. Let's jump into the demo application. Showing your full-blown demo application straight away and going through it line by line is not the best way to teach that, I think. So instead, we build it ourselves. We'll take a very simple example and I'll show you how I would reorganize code, restructure things, which patterns I would really suggest you not to use, and what's a com common pitfall. So let's start with the simple play Vue.js org playground example here. We have a message, and our goal is we want to show the message and toggle it through a button, and we also want to reverse uh, the displayed message, but not the message, uh, the original message, right? So far so good. This is our very simple goal for here now. First thing I want to do is I want to rename message because we know these requirements. So I would want to rename it to original message or input message, whatever, can be anything. That's totally fine. And also we choose this comes from the input here. That's also okay. Uh, it could also come from props and so on. It doesn't matter much for that example. So let's start with that. We want to remove this and let's tackle the first part. So we want to show the message and toggle through button, which means we need a button, right? Um, let's say toggle. If we're not too lazy, we could even say show and hide based on some condition. And then we have a diff that shows the original message for now, because that's what we have, right? So far, so good. Now we want to say v if, well, let's say is shown or is message shown. And here in toggle, we say a click is shown is not is shown, right? Okay, and now we need an ref, of course, to save that state because we want to have exactly that. And this is a Boolean. By default, it's false, and we're good to go. So if we put toggle in now, it will be shown, not shown. So far, so good. No problem here. Check. This is done. Now we want to reverse the display message also through a button. Maybe I should have mentioned that. And what we do here is, once again, we just cobble that copy that button, <laughs> nice mix, and name it reverse. And here we do something different. Let's copy that is shown ref because we, oh, is shown ref and uh, let's copy that over and name it is reversed. And we take that and use that for the logic for the button. So we can push the button and nothing happens. Also very important, what we also want is that only this message and not this message will be reversed. So here difficulty starts a little bit. We need a computer property, right? So we can say const um, message or transform message, or everyone to name it, is a computer property, which we'll import from view. If you use Nuxt, of course, you don't need to. Thanks, auto imports. And here we say, okay, you know what? If is reversed the value, then return message dot split wait message dot value 
it's also not message it's original message the value split reverse yeah that's how we do it join there we go okay and otherwise yeah i'm not using turn here on purpose we just return original message just to make it a bit more clear of course we can shorten that down that's not the point here right and now we want to render that message that can be property down here okay so far so good and now we can reverse that without reversing this so far nothing fancy right functionality works and there let's say the thing will become a bit more complex we want to do a few more things in there and what i commonly see especially people doing coming from the composition APIs, they do the following. They say, you know what? Okay, we have some data here or my state. Uh, I have my computer properties here. And then I have, let's say a watch here because, okay, let's say when we toggle the text, then uh, there is a chance that, I don't know, uh, another text shows, right? Then we have a watch. Then we can say we watch that uh, is shown. And uh, we say new value here. And we check if not new value, then we return. We saw only when it's actually shown, we do something, otherwise we return here. And then we say, yeah, let's add another ref const uh, is uh, random text shown or something like that. It's another ref, very simple with Boolean again. And then we say, if that's the case, no value is true. And in all cases, we want to reset it here so we avoid that it stays there forever. And let's have another div saying we have its random text shown. Then we do some, this has a chance. Right now it always toggles, right? So we also do if math.random smaller than 0 0.5, they return of course, we have to call random. And here we are. And now this has a chance to pop up by 50%. Okay. Once again, nothing crazy, but what I wanted to highlight here is that's a problem. Like we abandoned the options API for the composition API. And the idea is to not just replace that by, okay, now we write everything uh, the same way as the options API, but not having options, right? We don't have some, I don't know, data option we don't have computed options and i've seen it multiple times that people do like that saying okay i put my functions there put my computers and it's basically options api style but written in a composition api and as i just mentioned that's an issue because once again we want to group by logic and not by the options and right like that code is a bit spaghetti code because we have to jump through various lines if you want to know what's happening so let's fix that up. First, we get rid of these comments. If you ever see these comments like, oh, computers, watch, props, and so on, get rid of them. They won't help. Because once again, you don't want to group by these types. I understand when you say like, okay, I don't know, all compiler macros or uh, something like that. But even there, yeah, it's always define props, define emits, and whatever macros will <laughs> come in the future too, or whatever you use there, that's easy to search for. So. I wouldn't necessarily do that at all and just get rid of them. And here we are. And now we want to figure out what's actually grouped together, what belongs together, right? So we have this original message here. Where is it used? Well, only in that message block. So we can move that down here. Code still works. We just relocate things, right? And then we have this is random text shown. That's only relevant for the watcher down here, right? And of course, in the template, makes sense. This is reversed, also doesn't have to be here because that's also part of that block here when it comes to reversing the message. And that is shown, well, that can also go down. It's relevant for the watcher, right, and the template, and that's it. And now, in a way, we neatly organize that. And now people could say like, oh yeah, let's say message related stuff and text shown things and we're good, right? Wrong. Wrong answer. Always, even, even not in view code in general. If you write a comment to describe stuff, why not write a function instead of a comment, name that useful and call it. And 
Here we do exactly the same things, but with our view API available. So we use the composition API to make this even a bit nicer. So let's have a look. So instead of writing message related stuff, what we could do is we could create a composable. And here, what we can do, okay, that original message has to stay here, right? But maybe that part, that part could go because we don't need that exact, the exact details here. Even if you could say, you know what? Yeah, that could be a computer too. You could say this is reversed message and say, okay, you know what? Um, this can go here. Const reversed message is computed and do that because we don't have to recalculate it every time, right? We can just do it once when the message uh, changed. Anyway, let's take these things and um, let's create a new file and name it use message.ts. Okay. We copy it over. Well, wait, we copy it over. And as we said, that original message part, wait, that should stay. So we can't really take that. I'll copy these declarations and we'll take that over. Uh, and say, okay, we say export function use message. And we wrap that around here. Okay, so far so good. Nice. Now, if we could even go further and say, you know what, this takes um, some kind of original message here, and that could be a ref of type a string, or like a ref that contains a string, or it could be uh, just a plain string if you want to, right? Both options are possible. In our case, we probably don't need that part, but uh, if we want to be flexible API-wise and composables, there it doesn't hurt to be flexible, that's fine. And now we can say, okay, you know what? Um, let's say input here, and then we say const original message is to ref input. And to ref will turn the input either into ref, or if it's ref, it will stay the same, which explains it very nicely here. And then what we can do is we return here is reversed and message. And we could even go further and say, do we really need that is reversed? Well, not really if we implement a function called toggle reverse, right? Because we don't need that state. The only thing we really need is we have to know, we have to have, to have a way to toggle. So let's create a function called toggle reverse. And yet that might seem a lot, but this is very simple code. Imagine it in a way bigger project. And here we just do is reversed is the value, of course, is not is reversed the value. There are also very nice view use function for that. So don't sleep on them and take a look at them. But this here is plain view just to give you uh, a little glimpse of how it looks like. And now, of course, we could say, yeah, you know what? We use that use message. Um, we, we take that here, say use message. We put in the original message. We import that. So we say import use message from use message and that's fine. Okay. And then here our result is toggle reverse and message. This is what, this is all we need to show in the template on click. We call this toggle reverse function and the message is the message that will be shown. The internals, they don't matter, right? That's fine. So here we could still keep that message related stuff if we really want to, but now it's a bit clear. Okay. And well, are we done yet? Once again, no, because now we created our composable and we extract an extra file, but this is a bit too much, right? We use that use message composable just in one component. So do we even need to extract it at all? Is it really necessary? Hmm. And here comes an important tip that I really like to use. Just because you create a composable function like that, you don't have to extract it, right? Let's just take the whole thing because if we only use it in one composable, why would we just back and put it down here? Now we import a few things, right? Like we we'll take the declaration from here, take the type ref and the to ref, get rid of that import. And that's, of course, we should also use TypeScript over here. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, it will complain. That's fine. All right. So we have our own extracted function down here. That's fine. We could emit that message related stuff. We could emit that. We can also keep it. That's okay. And things will still work as usual. But now we kind of, let's say, quote unquote, hide implementation detail. Because top level, we don't really care. The most important part is that we somehow 
get these functions. If you want to know what they do, we have a look at the actual composable, the inline composable down here. And of course, we could do the same now here with uh, this part, with like use text. In this case, it's always good to, to decide on is it necessary, is it not necessary. That depends on how much logic your component involves, right? But it's very important to not forget just because you have a composable, you don't need to put in a new file. Like in this case, we just decided to create a composable, which helps us just inline that component to organize our code. And with these, let's say, inline composables, you can do lots of lots of things. And we didn't even start with data fetching here, right? There are not many complex operations going on. So I really think these inline composables are helpful to structure the code in a way that you say, okay, top level, these are the things what happens. These are maybe, um, the variables, the values that I need to pass to other composables. So you have a nice top level structure. And very interestingly, I'm of course not the first person uh, ever discovering that. Um, if we go all the way back to the graphics from the beginning of the video, right, the side by side options versus composition API, the right side, let's have a look at that gist of Avenue. And here we are, as I mentioned, it's the gist from the graphics, also links in the description. Uh, as usual. And interestingly, the pattern is very similar. For example, here we have use current folder data. And if you want to know what this is actually doing, well, let's do a control F and jump into it. Ha, huh, it's down here. Reusable functions specific to this component, right? That's not a problem at all. We can totally do this. I mean, if Evan does that, why shouldn't we? Uh, and also it makes things way cleaner. So straight away, like this is basically the top level code. Some imports, reusable functions, some GraphQL, MISC stuff, a bit of network, of course, which is also composable. And then we go for these step by step, very high level. And for example, folders are also then used in the template. But also, if you take a look at, for example, the network state from the use network state, this is used in other composables as well, right? We passed it on because it's in this case necessary if we use the file explorer, like in that component does. So this way you can structure things a lot, a lot better. And you don't have this typical spaghetti code people claim to use the composition API. That doesn't mean that you <laughs> can't write spaghetti code in a composition API. Of course, it's a little bit easier, but to be honest, this is also a problem with the options API. Nobody keeps you from writing bad code unless you have linting rules, code reviews, and best practices. Nevertheless, I hope that video helped a little bit and these inline composables will make your code a bit cleaner. Go ahead, refactor now, and please let me know in the comments if you'll do it. And maybe you've done it already, or maybe after doing it, post an example. I'm really curious to see. And as usual, stay tuned for the next videos. Happy hacking. See you soon.